Oh, I thought it was a. I thought it was a squirrel. <laughs> it could be. Ryan. Looks cooler than you think, Brad. Well, because the trick is, <laughs> you gotta get shots that nobody else is getting, like this empty parking lot. Be surprised. <laughs> and I'll make it walking. look cool. So shortly after the Women's March on January 21st, I got a notification on Facebook talking about the something called the March for Science. I accepted it, but didn't really plan on going. If we're being honest, I have advanced degrees in the sciences, and I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't picture scientists all coming together to march. Hey, hey, ho, ho. We won't let our planet go. They just don't seem like the marching type, the activist type. Stand up, Knowledge and science are at the top. What do we do? Stand up, But then as weeks turned into months and Trump's administration continued to cut funding towards sciences and science programs, I got this like wretched feeling of dread in my stomach. Now, even though I didn't know how a march was going to help science and I had no idea how many people were going to show up, and I had no idea what to expect and felt pretty uneasy about it. I figured the very least I could do was go show up and just be a body. And from there I just let my curiosity lead the way. So what are you guys here for? Like why is science, why is this march important to you? Well. We've got doctor, engineer, and then both of us work in science fields. Okay. So it's part of our lives. Yeah, that's Seemed awesome. Important. It's a part of everyone's mm -hmm. lives. This one was literally created by science, so that that's is important awesome. to us. Mm -hmm. wow. We're very happy that she's here. Yeah. Test <laughs> two, baby. Yep. That's awesome. Go I'm happy you're here too. Yeah, environmental studies. Okay. Geology. 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 Duncan, stop. You guys are awesome. Mm -hmm. Mine says we love her. There, and there and might be another Earth in the th a thousand, ten billion, eighty-five hundred thousand, thousand, thousand miles. miles. <laughs> <laughs> Science rules. Save it. Save it. It's a yes. Yeah. They estimated roughly forty-eight thousand people showed up. But the March for Science and that's They estimated roughly forty-eight thousand people showed up for the March for Science, and that's just in Minnesota. These are going on all over the country and the world. And everybody was marching for a similar reason. A lot of the reasons didn't even cross my mind. I had it in my head that only people in the fields of science were gonna care about this march. As I was walking around, I couldn't help but feel just as ignorant about what I expected as the people who are cutting funding to all these programs. I had it in my head that scientists don't march. I also had it in my head that there wouldn't be any Trump supporters at this rally. Brad, I forgot to say I was here with you, man. Hey, I like Trump, but I also like science, so I'm kind of uh, torn right now. <laughs> You're in the middle, man. I'm kind of torn. Still marching. Still marching. But I'll, it's a little warm out here. It's very warm out here. Probably because of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was proven wrong on all these levels. All of them. But I still had that one question that wasn't answered yet. How was this march going to change the world? How is the, how how is a group of people going to change the way people view science? Yes, it helped me realize there is a giant community bigger than I could have ever imagined. It also brought some awareness to my own ignorance that I had. Like I've just been so in my little niche of the science world, you forget how broad this is and how many people it affects. And just seeing this amount of people in one spot really kind of destroyed that ignorance. 
I march today to call for an end to the click of science, the unattainable status that permeates our professions. As a member of the science community, I have heard, as I'm sure you have, the oft-repeated chorus line of, I was always so bad at science. I was never smart enough for it. That mindset starts in our earliest grades. As young adults, they choose not to pursue science-related careers. As older adults, they begin to tune out the barrage of facts and explanations they hear from scientists on TV. It alienates them. When we become too hurried to explain to a worried mother why antibiotics don't work for viruses, we alienate. When we strike a condescending tone while discussing greenhouse gases with a climate denier, we alienate. If we are going to make real change, we need everyone on board, everyone in one click. Science is not just for the smartest, the nerdiest, or the elite among us. It's for everyone. If you have a garden, you are a botanist. If you've created a new recipe, you've used the scientific method. If you've ever explained the birds and the bees to your kids, you are a science teacher. We've marched together. Now let us live by these words together. Help me remove obstacles for our kids and for our future. Thank you. It was one of those life-changing things, seeing people of all different shapes and sizes and all different avenues of life and the world all come together that there's a lot of people on the same page. And maybe, maybe the best lesson I found out in this whole thing, I posted on my Instagram that night. I, I, it, it kept me awake and I, and I wrote, yesterday I was clever so I wanted to change the world. But today I am wise so I am changing myself. With that being said, life is meant to be experienced and curiosity will get you there.